there are places in the Bible that have really exciting stories that you've never even heard about. And we're going to be talking with Aaron Lipkin today about some of those very, very exciting Bible stories. Let's call them backstories because whoever talks about a man named Sisera? <laughs> well, we're going to talk about Sisera today. And <clears throat> some of you who are avid uh, scripture readers will recognize the name Sisera. Others will say, what? Sisera who? What? <laughs> Never heard of him. <laughs> But uh, he was an enemy of Israel, and he's, he's spoken about in the book of Judges. Very, very, uh, in a very uh, negative way, let's put it that way. Uh, God is against Sisera, and, and, and this comes at the time of Deborah and Barak. Yes. Uh, as, and Deborah was, was a judge in Israel, and if anything, she was one of the most powerful leaders Israel ever had. And that's where this story comes together. Yes, and, and we're talking about the book of Judges, uh, which is kind of considered the mi mid medieval period of the Israelites, uh, a time where the tribes uh, are taking care of themselves uh, and, and the nation of Israel is not as it should be united. Uh, and they are fighting against the Canaanites, the Amorites, and the different nations that reside in the land of Israel. Now everybody heard of the Philistines. We know that the Philistines came from uh, the Greek islands. Um, and, and, and yet here yeah. uh, in this story we hear that, that King uh, Javan um, had a, a, a warlord by the name of Sisera. Um, and again, when, when, we've been, when we read this story and we, the miraculous victory of Barak and Deborah over uh, Sisera and the Canaanite armies, uh, again, we, you know, we see the hand of God. We see the big miracle of uh, probably uh, large floods that defeated the armies of Sisera and helped the Israelites. Um, but again, when, when you put the story aside and, and you're going into archaeology, you yeah, have Professor Zartal, Adam Zartal, starting to, to you know, excavating a, a mysterious site uh, called El Ahwat, and suddenly he sees a, a city that is not a typical Canaanite city. Hmm. The buildings are built in a totally different way. Um, uh, the, the architecture, the way the, the, the layout of the city is very different than the Canaanite cities. It's not an Israelite city. Um, a city that was destroyed and, you know, doesn't know where, where who does the city belong to, who built it, and suddenly a, an excavation a crew from uh, Sardinia uh, comes in uh, from the, uh, the islands of Italy and, and they come in and, and they see the monuments there and they tell them, well, this is, this is, from, this is from where we are. Ah. This is, yeah, this is from Sardinia. And so, and so Professor Zeltal describes how he travels to Sardinia to see uh, the, uh, the archaeology there. Uh -huh. And he comes to the conclusion that the city that he is excavating in Israel belongs to Sisera and the people, the Chardonnay people uh, that come from Sardinia. We, everybody knows about the Philistines. Yes. Uh, but there were a couple of nations that invaded the land of Israel uh, during the time of Joshua and the judges uh, from Greece, from Italy. And uh, Sisera was part of that uh, group of people. And Professor Zertal believes that the city he excavated is Haroshet Hagoim, uh, the city of Sisera, which is mentioned in the Book of Judges. Wow. And so again, again, a, a, a historical um, a, a evidence. Yeah, uh, and I'm looking mm -hmm. at Judges mm -hmm. chapter 4 mm -hmm. here. Uh, <clears throat> and verse 2, and it said, And the Lord had sold them, that is, sold Israel, into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, that reigned uh, in Hazor, the captain of whose army was Sisera. 
And there you have the story. And, the, and you could just read past this and say, well, uh, you know, another time. But on the other hand, when you begin to know who that is and what he did, and you put this in the whole narrative of the Bible, it adds a lot to the story of the Bible. Correct. And you, and you see that you had the local Canaanite nations that were residing in the land, and you had the foreigners from Greece and Italy that were uh, residing in the coastal uh, uh, lands. And obviously they were not in very good relations. But when yeah. they see the enemy coming in, when they see the Israelites coming into the land, the Canaanites, King Javan, Mm -hmm. and Sisera and, and, and the Chardonnay people from Italy come together to fight against the Israelites. Uh, and uh, as Professor Zertal found, the city was destroyed. Uh, and we know by who? By Barak and Deborah. And approximately, mm -hmm. where is this located? Uh, this is in the Jezreel Valley. Jezreel Valley. Yeah, and, and exactly where the story is described in the Book of Judges. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the battle uh, between Deborah and, and, and Barak and, and uh, Sisera and the Canaanites. So it's really the story of an external invasion. Uh, well, let's, let's say the Greeks invaded and they said, okay, we've decided this land is so beautiful we're going to take it for ourselves. But they were not successful. They were not successful, as we know from the Bible. Uh, but uh, again, it's, it's amazing to see how the archaeological evidence uh, proves that there were uh, people like Sisera uh, who came from the Greek islands uh, to the land of Israel uh, to settle and, and as part of the invasion of, of those nations, the nations of the sea uh, into the land. Anything you can discover that brings the Bible, uh, the Old Testament, into uh, technicolor reality <clears throat> is, is always an addition to the way you look at Scripture. If you can see that, that what you're reading here really happened and that there was a reason why things unfolded the way they did, it just adds so much to the biblical narrative that you never thought was there before. Yes, and, and the, also the Old Testament also carries, these stories carry a message. And the message is very simple. If you are righteous, if you do what God commands you to do, uh, then God will be with you. Uh, he will make you victorious, just like the Israelites were victorious against Sisera and the Canaanites. Uh, but not just that, also the fact that, that in order to, to be successful, you need to initiate, you need to, to perform, you need to do it. And, and the message I believe that we, we see in this story of Deborah and Barak is that first of all, there is divine providence. God interferes in history in order to, to, uh, to make the righteous successful and, and, and to show his glory. And, and the glory of God is shown very well in this story. Also the glory of Deborah and Yael, the women, uh, that are very, very, a very, very important part of this story. And also to show that in order to, to be successful, you need to initiate, you need to, to, to do things, and God will make you successful. Uh, and this, I, I think, is embedded in this amazing story. Aaron, always good to talk to you. And I wish we had more time, but uh, you're on your way, and you'll be back uh, at your home, 30 minutes away from <laughs> from the altar we've been talking about. And we'll be waiting for you, Gary, to come again to Israel <laughs> for the third time. <laughs> I, I would like to come for the third time, believe me. Aaron Lipkin, uh, he's always doing something really exciting, and we're, we'll be talking with him in the future. I'm Gary Stearman. Keep watching, everybody. We are. Thanks for joining us on Prophecy Watchers. You can find us on the web at prophecywatchers.com where you can sign up for our free email newsletter or follow us at facebook.com slash prophecywatchers. In the meantime, keep watching everybody and we'll see you soon.